The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, smoking enjoyment depends on taste, and taste alone. Yes, in a cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. And you can taste the difference in a Lucky Strike. So mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. Yes, Luckies taste better, and here's why. First, LSMFT Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild tobacco that tastes better. There's no substitute for fine tobacco, and don't let anybody tell you different. Second, Luckies are made to taste better. In fact, they're the best made of all five principal brands. Yes, that's a fact. Established by tests, measuring those important factors of workmanship that affect the taste of cigarettes. Tests made in the research laboratory of the American Tobacco Company and verified by leading independent laboratory consultants. So remember, your smoking enjoyment depends on taste and taste alone. And you'll find Lucky's taste better. Always so mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. From Palm Springs, California, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we're broadcasting from Palm Springs, California. This being such a romantic spot, I'd like to make the opening introduction with a little poem. A poem? <laughs> Nestled in the hills far away from care is a place we go to breathe the desert air. And there, out by the pool, far from strife and toil, is our blue-eyed star selling suntan oil. <laughs> and here he is, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, since we're in a poetic mood, I've written a poem for you, too. Oh, you have? Yes. I did not like your jingle, and if one more joke you tell, it's Bon Voyage, Don Wilson, and welcome home, Von Zell. <laughs> Let's not have any more of your poems, eh, Henry Wadsworth, fat fellow? <laughs> hmm? Now, wait a minute, Jack. If you get fresh with me, I'll follow you around all day and keep you in the shade. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, anyway, it's sure good to get back to Palm Springs, isn't it, Don? Ah, uh, yes, Jack. I always have a wonderful time here. I do, too, particularly because a fellow can have such privacy here. You know, Don, yesterday I passed a big crowd in front of the drugstore and not one person turned around or even bothered to look at me. Really? Well, Jack, why were there such a crowd gathered? They were getting Eddie Cantor's autograph. <laughs> Imagine. But, Jack, if you say people here have so much privacy, why did they ask Eddie Cantor for his autograph? They didn't ask him. Hmm, they didn't? No. Don, when a man stops you on the street, sings two choruses of Ida, <laughs> then stamps his name on your forehead, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> What an eager beaver. Ah, uh, Jack, you're just mad at Eddie because he beat you on the golf course yesterday. Sure, but he wouldn't have beaten me if he'd have played fair. Fair? Yes, imagine this, Don. When we both got on the last green, just as I was getting ready to putt, he put down a dime to mark his ball. What's wrong with that? He divided my point of interest. <laughs> <laughs> then when I missed the putt, I got so mad I took a swing at the dime and sliced it right into my pocket. <laughs> The first hole in one I ever made. Anyway, Don, I'm glad you mentioned golf because tonight our program is dedicated to the formal opening of the new Tamaris Country Club here in Palm Springs. And it's really one of the most beautiful hey, pardon golf... pardon me, but does this dull twosome mind if a funny man plays through? Oh, well, hiya, folks.
Well, look who's here, Sir Thomas Beecham. <laughs> Say, Phil, Don and I were just talking about Tamaris, the beautiful new golf course. Since you're such a good golfer, Phil, you'll love it. Yeah, I know, Jackson. I played in the tournament out there yesterday. It is. It's a great course. I thought I saw you out there yesterday, Phil. You were playing with some of your musicians, weren't you? No. Well, I saw Remley, Sammy, and Fletcher going around the course with you. Yeah, but they weren't playing. Remley was carrying my bag. Well, what was Sammy doing? He was carrying Remley. <laughs> well, what was Fletcher doing? He was carrying the stuff that made it necessary for Sammy to carry Remley. <laughs> oh, yes, Remley is your handicap. He ain't no water hazard. <laughs> I know, I know. Hey, Jackson, how about you and me playing out at Tamaris someday? Okay, Phil, maybe we can make a match. Yeah, okay. what do you usually go around then? Well, my handicap is... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, Don. Don, uh, watch me. Watch me get him this time. Phil, ask me that again, will you? Ask you what again? What do you usually go around in? Shorts or slacks, depending on the weather. <laughs> Sammy may be carrying Remley, but you're carrying this program. <laughs> Phil, if that joke is carrying the program, I'd rather dragged a little bit. Anyway, I'd, I'll play golf with you any time you want to. Okay, Jackson, how much you want to bet? I don't want to bet anything. All I want you to do is every time we get on the green, mark your ball with a dime. A dime? Why? I got a slice that'll make me a fortune. <laughs> Say, Don, if you like to play a Tamaris sometime, I'll get you Hey, Jackson, a... I heard you and Don reciting poetry before. So what? Hey, I got one that's a fifth. A poem? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's about the weather that we had yesterday. Listen to this. <laughs> I was getting some sun. Then I went inside. Because the little white clouds sat down and cried. <laughs> Isn't that cute? That's very cute. Pretty good, you know. I expected some... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, everybody. Well, Dennis, I hope you're having as much fun in Palm Springs as we are. I sure am, but boy, am I tired. Tired? What have you been doing? Well, last night I went to the movies and I had a stand for two hours. That crowded, huh? No, there was plenty of room. Then why'd you have to stand in the movies? I went to a drive-in and I didn't have a car. Now, wait a minute, Dennis. How did you get into a drive-in without a car? Oh, I was carrying an umbrella, and they thought I was a convertible. <laughs> oh, stop being silly. What's that on your nose? A windshield wiper. What? Psst, psst, psst. Now, cut that out! <laughs> windshield wiper. I suppose that thing on your forehead is your license number. No, Eddie can't his autograph. Oh, yeah. Now, Dennis, stop being silly and answer me. Are you having a good time? Oh, I'll say. Friday night, I went to the Chi-Chi and saw Sally Rand. I never laughed so hard in all my life. You know, Don, the weather here has been so beautiful today. I think wait I may... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold it. Let's, uh, let's go back here a minute. Look, um... <laughs> didn't you listen to what this kid just said? I listened to it, heard it, and ignored it. <laughs> well, I ain't going to ignore it. Dennis, you went to the Chi-Chi and saw Sally Rand's act? Uh-huh. The Sally Rand? Uh-huh. And when you finally saw Sally Rand's act, you, uh, laughed? Yeah, I was sitting up so close, those fans tickled. <laughs> Don't... Don't look to me for sympathy, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Years of experience... Years of experience have taught me that the only way to get along with Dennis have nothing more to do with him than is necessary. Like this, for instance. Now, Dennis, we're doing a program and you have to do a song. Yes, sir. What song are you going to sing? The date boats are coming. You mean shrimp boats. This is Palm Springs, bud. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and sing.
like rain. We make mistakes and feel sorry when we made someone blue. But I made the greatest mistake of all when I said goodbye to you. Mistake sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris and his stumbling tumbleweed orchestra. <laughs> and now, folks... Hold it, I... Melvin. Just a minute. Just blow up a minute. Huh? I mean, look, I don't mind so much when we're at home, but when we're out of town, let's don't be making insulting remarks about the orchestra, huh? Well, Phil, I got a right to make comments about your band. After all, who's the star of this show? Well, when I see my paycheck, I know it ain't me. <laughs> Oh, stop complaining. I'm not complaining, Jackson. It's just that I'd like to pay income tax like everybody else. <laughs> but they don't even think I'm a citizen. <laughs> Phil, Phil, the only reason people don't think you're a citizen is because with that bottle of Lord Calvert in your hand all the time, you look like an Englishman. <laughs> such a long line for such a little laugh. <laughs> So don't argue with me about money, salary, or it. Come in. Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, Mr. Kitzel. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, it's certainly nice seeing you. What are you doing here in Palm Springs? Oh, I just came down for a little visit. Oh, good, good. <laughs> where, uh, where are you living? At the Hacienda Paseo de La Salle. The Hacienda Paseo de la Salle? Sal is my brother-in-law. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he's married to your sister? Yeah, her name is Hacienda. <laughs> well, what about Paseo? He's a silent partner. <laughs> Oh, I see. Well, tell me, Mr. Kitzel, is your wife... Your wife is here with you? Yes, and are we having fun? We go swimming, we play tennis. And you know, this morning, my wife rented a bicycle built for two. Oh, and you both went for a ride, huh? No, just her. <laughs> then why did she get a bicycle built for two? Believe me, she can use it. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, you mean your, uh... Your wife is on the heavy side? If it was only on the side, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> oh, well, what's the difference? As long as you're in love with her, Mr. Kitzel, that's all that matters. Mm, that's what I keep telling myself. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. So long, Mr. Kitzel. Thanks for dropping in. Well, it seems that everybody's in Palm Springs this week. You know, Jack, I'm glad I'm here, too, because I did some research on this community that I'm sure will please our sponsor very much. 
Please a sponsor, why? Well, uh, what's the name of the company that makes Lucky Strike cigarettes? The American Tobacco Company. That's right. Now, who were the earliest Americans in America? Why, the Indians, of course. That's right. Now, here around Palm Springs, there are many Indians. So yesterday I went out in the desert till I met some members of the tribe that first settled Palm Springs, the Coahuila Indians. The Coahuilas? Yes, and do you know what those Indians said to me? No, Don, what? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> what else? Oh, what else do they say, Don? Me, like them, lucky strike. Me, send them smoke signals. L.S., M.F.T. them. L.S., M.F.T. them. T. Um? You betcha, um, lucky strike, heap round, heap firm, heap fully packed, heap free and easy on the draw. Now look, Don. No call me Don, me heap big Indian chief. You big heap, that's all. <laughs> and I got another word here, ugh. <laughs> What's that? Shh. They send them signals from reservation. It say only fine tobacco can give them good taste in cigarette. And don't let any drum tell you different. Don, that was very good. What are those horses' hooves? Commercial finish. Take them plugged back to reservation. <laughs> oh, me catch them up. Peckham. And Don, that was a very educational commercial, but you made one little mistake. It was the Tokwitz Indians who founded Palm Springs, not the Coelas. Oh, no, you're wrong, Jack. It was the Coelas. I'm not wrong, Don. I'll prove that I'm right. There happen to be a, quite a few Indians in the audience, so I'll ask one of them. <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask that one in the front row. He must be a chief. He's wearing a headdress. Excuse me. But was it the Tokwitz Indians or the Coelas who founded Palm Springs? I don't know. <laughs> well, what tribe do you belong to? I don't know. Well, where's your reservation? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know anything. You're a fine Indian. I'm not an Indian. Then how come you're wearing those feathers in your hair? I went to the Chi Chi last night and sat too close. <laughs> oh, well then, Smarty, if you went there last night, you must be an Indian because I know you had a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was pretty funny, wasn't it, Dennis? I don't know. <laughs> Look, Dennis, why don't you just... I'll get it. Hello? I have a long-distance call for Jack Benny. This is Jack Benny. It's collect. Hello? Hello? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> a collect call, huh? Operator, find out who's calling. In just a moment. Mr. Benny will not accept the charges till he knows who's calling. Tell him it's Lana Turner. Rochester. <laughs> I thought you'd be down here by now. Where are you calling from? From Pomona. Pomona? What'd you stop there for? I got a flat tire. Oh, that's too bad. No, that's good. It was laying in the road, and it's better than the one we had on. <laughs> oh. If I find three more, I'll be there by morning. Well, you better be here by morning. I'm going to play golf, and I want you to caddy for me. Oh, boss, I hate to caddy for you at Palm Springs. Now, stop complaining. Tamarisk is a very level course. There's nothing tough about it. Nothing for you, but how about me? I have to carry a golf, cla a golf bag, 12 clubs, a basket of sandwiches, a gallon of lemonade, a first aid kit, and a parasol. So what? You don't need a caddy. You need a burrow. <laughs> oh, Rochester, you don't carry so much. I don't. Remember what happened last time I went out loaded down like that? What happened? An old prospector tied a rope around my neck and led me off into the mountains. Why? Why'd you go with him? I couldn't see where I was until he unloaded me. Well, stop making things up. Anyway, I'm going to play golf in the morning, and I want you to caddy. Okay, I'll do it, but do me a favor this time, will you? What is it? If we lose a ball, let's forget it. Those bloodhounds are hard to handle. 
Okay, okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? Aren't you doing another television show next Sunday, March 9th, on CBS Network at 4.30 p.m. Civic Standard Time? That's right. Why? You're paying for this call. Let's put a commercial in it. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, Rochester. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, in honor of the opening of Palm Springs' newest golf course, Tamaris, we are going oh, to Jack, do... Jack, before we go any further, I must tell you something, and I know you're going to be surprised. Surprised? What is it, Don? There's a friend of yours who also belongs to Tamaris, and he'd like to come on and say a few words. A friend of mine? Mm -hmm. Is it Mr. Anderson, the president of Tamaris? No. Well, is it Ben Hogan, the pro of Tamaris? No. Well, who is it? Danny Kay! Come on in, Danny! Danny Kay! <laughs> Danny. Hello, Jack Benny. <laughs> but, Danny, this is such a surprise coming right out on my program. It's, it's, well, it's, it's... Oh, stop stuttering. I'm not going to charge you for it. <laughs> oh, oh. Now, Jack, the reason I'm here is, well, because every time you come to Palm Springs, you always do an informal show. Isn't that right? That's right. Well, some of the boys at the club cooked up an idea that I'm sure you're going to like. What is it? Well, we decided to form a quartet and sing the song you wrote. My song? Mm-hmm. When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. Suddenly I'm sick. <laughs> what? Oh, anyway, Jack, the other three fellows are out outside. Uh, can I call them in? Three fellows, who are they? Yeah, well, Frank Sinatra, George Burns, and Groucho Marx. Groucho. Hello, fellas. Hello. 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 That's brilliant dialogue. Huh? <laughs> well, welcome to the show, fellas. And if you say the magic word, you get a bottle of suntan oil. <laughs> say, Jack, that reminds me. Huh? Jack. What? That reminds me. Huh? That bottle of suntan oil you sold me was much too greasy, and boy, was I embarrassed. Why? What happened? Well, yesterday when I put some on, I slipped right out of my suit. <laughs> No kidding. Look, fellas, I came here to sing, so let Jordan get it over with, okay? Okay. When I okay. say I beg your well, pardon. Hold it, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> yes, yes, not yet. When I say... I, 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 Groucho, I, I. that's me, 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 me. I may sing lousy, but I'm grammatically correct. <laughs> uh, oh, I, uh... I'm sorry. I'm Groucho. Fellas. Uh, fellas, come on, I'll sing on, Jack's go. song. And right. fellas, I want to tell you how much I appreciate your coming over to do it. No one but real friends, real pals would give up a Sunday afternoon just to come over here and do this wonderful Jack. song. What? Shut up. <laughs> oh. All right, fellas, let's take it. Now, what key are we going to sing it in, Danny? It'll help if we all take different ones. <laughs> Oh, all right, all right, fellas, let's go. Can we, we have go. a nice introduction, please? <laughs> now, when I say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. When you ask me to forgive you, I'll return. Like the swallows at Serrano Return to Capistrano <laughs> For you, my heart Will always, always Yearn Will always Hey! 
that you are sorry, and I will understand. If the harvest moon will pledge our love, and now, honey child, don't be listening to anybody else. Since we're parting, we'll went back to whence we started, and sweetheart, I'll come back to you. enjoyable taste of truly fine tobacco, reach for a Lucky for the difference between just smoking and really enjoying your smoke is the taste of a cigarette. And Lucky's taste better for two important reasons. First, LSMFT Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, mild tobacco that tastes better. There's no substitute for fine tobacco and don't let anybody tell you different. Second, Luckies are made to taste better. In fact, they're the best made of all five principal brands. Yes, you'll be happy when you go lucky, because luckies taste better. So mild, so smooth, so firm and fresh, with better taste in every puff. So next time you buy cigarettes, try a carton of luckies. You'll find luckies taste better. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Danny Kay, George Burns, Frank Sinatra, Groucho Marx, and Benny Rubin for appearing on my program today. We'll be back with you next Sunday on radio at the same time and on television a half hour later when I hope you will all be watching. Excuse me. Hello? Hello, is this Jack Benny? Yes. Is this the Jack Benny that was born in Racine, Wisconsin? No, no, I was born in Waukegan, Illinois. But well, you got a sister named Jeanette, haven't you? No, no, no. My sister's name is Florence. Well, are you the Jack Bunny that drives a light green DeSoto? No, no, no. I have a Maxwell. But you play the piano, don't you? No, no. I'm sorry. I play the violin. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Jack, Jack, who was that? A phone call from a stranger. <laughs> Good night, Paul. Brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is Don Wilson reminding you to listen to your hit parade with Guy Lombardo every Thursday night presented by Lucky Strike. Stay tuned for the Amos Nandy show which follows immediately. This is the CBS Radio Network.